In this video, I'm going to properly min-max Colervo to have the best flexibility and survivability. For more info about Colervo and how his kit work, please do go check out my Colervo build and review. Earlier today, I did find something quite interesting, and that's by using combo count chance with your second ability. This way, you're easily able to build up combo without physically hitting the enemies. However, you can combine both the second ability and actually hitting the enemies. But not only that, you can also add your collective curse, counting as additional hits, to buff up that combo count chance. Now we're left with two things to deal with, survivability and buffing up our damage. Since this build does not require priming, we just went with full raw damage. And because this is a mid-max build, you're going to need the Archon Shards. All of this is to balance out the strength, so you can have more mod space for utility and survivability. In my other Colervo build, I did go with a health tank setup, granted me additional armor, health, and damage reduction. So you can literally turn off your brain. However, this loadout is very active, meaning don't stand still for way too long. And because I'm going to be spamming a lot of abilities, keeping up my combo counter and overguard, cursing enemies, and using my first ability, I needed to have the appropriate amount of energy income while also balancing out a decent amount of duration while having the exact amount of ability strength required to maximize collective curse. And that's why, for the Archon Shards, you're going to need two Crimson Tau 4 Shards. No replacement there. And a single regular Crimson Shard. While the other two are going to be your Amber Shards for the casting speed. This way, you're going to have 40% strength paired up with the Molt Augmented Arcane. Molt Augmented gives you 60 ability strength at 250 stacks, which in total will give you enough for Collective Curse to have that 100% damage distribution. For this loadout, I did try quite a lot of Helminth abilities where I spent way too much resources just to test each one. Energy wasn't an issue, so Nourish just gave you the Viral Elemental Damage Multiplier, which is still a great damage increase. Roar was just another layer of damage. It's one of the better choices if you want consistent DPS. And since Roar affects your abilities as well, Roar also amplifies the damage your recompense. As I was testing Roar with Calervo, my recompense was able to stack up the slash procs and I ended up one-shotting the Acolyte without even hitting him with my first ability. Zata's Whisper isn't worth it. I did try the Cold Elemental War to give me armor while modding for health on Calervo. That is one way to have decent amount of survivability. But the downside is it just doesn't have enough duration. So the best survivability option I found was to just blind enemies passively while also stunning them so they don't shoot at you and that's with shooting gallery mesa's second ability this ability will jam enemy weapons so they stop shooting at you and while using the augment i'm able to blind enemies within the area shooting gallery nah it's boring and the best thing about this blind is that it doesn't require line of sight. So enemies around the corner which you haven't hit with your Collective Curse, since Collective Curse has a hard line of sight issue, this way the blind just saves you from stray shots. So either way, the build will still work without a helmet. The helmet of your choosing can be additional utility, survivability, or more damage. But of course, if you want bigger, bigger damage numbers, definitely go for Eclipse since it multiplies your weapon damage. Now, how to gain combo and maintain it. But first, the weapon. The melee is going to be a Zaw. I know, right? You have two options. You can either go with the Sephon, which is the Nakana Zaw, or the Bala, which is the Dagger. The Dagger has the lowest heavy attack windup speed, so if you want more speed, then this is definitely going to be your choice. But if you want to look cool and like a samurai, then the Sephon, which is going to be the second highest. The heavy attack multiplier of both weapon archetypes are the same, however daggers have a double hit. And that's it. There are three ways you can go about building up your combo. One is by spamming your second ability till you eventually reach 12 times combo, or use Magus Anomaly second ability and a simple slide attack. Or the other way is just by hitting everybody with Collective Curse, because all the enemies are linked, it counts as the melee hitting every single target, thus increasing your combo count. 
Taking a look at the build for the melee, my Balaza is the Bala, Peye, and Varjeet to Jai. And pretty much the same for the Subfan. I just I just changed the strike. That's it. I know, right, Magic? And with the Arcane, I'm going to use Exodia Triumph. This has 50% additional combo count chance. I'm going to be pairing that up with Quickening and True Punishment, 100%, but reduces your combo duration, which is not a problem. Because to maintain my combo, I have two Dexterity Arcanes, both on my primary and secondary. I'm not going to be using this for damage, but just for their passive, as both of them combined grant me bonus combo. And of course, if you do want to maintain combo even better, actually, I meant a more brain dead way, so you don't have to pay attention as much, you can run the Nerman Focus School. Otherwise, use whatever Focus School you want. To be honest, you can use any melee you want. The only reason Zaws were used is because of Exodia Triumph, just for that additional combo count chance. Otherwise, you do you. For the base damage, I have Primed Pressure Points, our Faction Damage mod to multiply all our damage and even the damage over time, the double crit damage mods to multiply all of our damage when we crit, and we're gonna be critting all the time. And the great thing about Amalgam Morgan Shatter is that it also increases my heavy attack wind up speed. And because I'm not priming enemies and I want raw damage, adding the elemental damage combo also multiplies my damage. And that's why I went with Prime Fever Strike and Focus Energy, which is both an electric mod and a heavy attack efficiency mod, which caps out my heavy attack efficiency to 90%. And yes, it's going to be the same build on this Sepfan Nikana Zaw. Now, moving on to the Colervo build. For the Arcanes, I'm running Arcane Fury. This has a 60% chance on a crit to grant me 180% melee base damage for 18 seconds. And, and we're going to be critting a lot, as I said earlier. And Molt Augmented. This paired up with my Archon Shards gives me a total of 100% strength, capping out my Collective Curse, while also granting me 400% critical chance with my Wrathful Advance. In the Aura, you have two options either on Swift Momentum or Enemy Radar. Swift Momentum gives you additional combo duration and heavy attack wind-up speed. Prime Surefooted, because spending less time on your butt is a huge DPS increase, and your Overguard isn't going to save you, because once it's off, well, you're going to be knocked down. Range at 175%, this affects all of my abilities, even my Augment. Muzzle Flash, the Shooting Gallery Augment, gets a blind range of 21 meters. A rank 4 Fleeting Expertise and Streamline to cap out my efficiency, and to counteract the negative duration, I have Primed Continuity. I definitely need that duration to be there, just to upkeep my Shooting Gallery. Primed Flow and Equilibrium for the Large Energy Pool, and Equilibrium is for that Orb Pickup Conversion. And of course, I'm going to be pairing this up with my Panzer Vopal Phyla for the free Viral Procs, and for that added survivability with Martyr Symbiosis. Otherwise, yeah, that's it. This is the Min-Max Kulerva build using his Wrathful Advance. With this loadout, you're able to clear hallways, rooms, really, really smoothly. People were asking me to rank Kulervo and a tier list. For one, his kit is quite interesting. His third ability is hella broken. His first ability is quite fun. Second ability for some passive combo gain. However, his main drawback is his survivability. Otherwise, an A-OK -okay frame. Anyway, folks, that has been it from this video. If you've learned something and enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.